Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and I'm popping in tonight to show you a quick and easy way to paint waves in acrylics. Um, so let me know when you're on here. Let me know if you can hear me. I'm getting my camera as close as I can. I'm just doing it on a little tiny um, five by seven canvas panel. I've done plenty of waves and you guys might have seen a tutorial or two of me actually painting the waves. So if you have, here's a little refresher anyways for you. I'm just going to use a few colors that I have out here. And I've got some blue and green, white. I've got a lime green there. Got an ultramarine blue. I do love this um, ivory color and a little brown for my waves. I mean, my sand, sorry. It's late and it's been a long day, but I wanted to come on quick and talk to you guys and, and show you a little bit. So say hello. I see you're popping on. Thank you for, for joining me tonight just for a few minutes and we'll just paint a little bit of a quick ocean scene. I know people have trouble with waves and clouds and they really can be super simple if you don't uh, dwell on them too much and just jump in and paint them. I've done a little tiny sketch. I don't do much. I've got a horizon line. So we're going to do a little tiny sky, some clouds, and a little bit of a wave, tiny bit of sand just peeking through. And I'm going to just jump right in. I'm going to use my hog bristle brushes, which I like. I'm also going to use some of my synthetic flats. So do let me know if you can hear in the sound. I see a lot of you guys on, but I don't see the com any comments. Oh, good. Okay, Chris, you can, you can, uh, can you hear me? Okay, from California. Hey, Tina. Okay, I know you guys are here, so I'll get started because um, you really just want to see what I'm doing. I'm going to start at the sky and work my way down. I think I'm going to skip over to a little bigger brush. I'm going to use, I usually just use my phthalo blue for the sky, but I did do a couple um, with some ultramarine blue. Let me see if I can kind of squeeze my palette on. And it gave me more of a periwinkle colored sky, almost on like a purple tone, which is kind of nice. I'm going to watch the comments as I, um, as I paint. So if you have any questions as I go, let me know. So I'm just gonna do a quick little blue sky. I like to do my sky. Can you see how I'm doing sort of crisscrossy strokes? I'm not going straight back and forth. I'm gonna save that kind of a brush stroke for the water. But in the sky, I want it to be a little textured. And I even like to take a little bit of white sometimes and mix that in as I go. But I am gonna put a few clouds on the top here after, after a little bit. I'm gonna jump into my phthalo blue. It's gonna give me a little bit of a darker tone to that. I paint quickly because I like to have my paints blend wet and wet. Acrylics are a little tougher to blend sometimes, as you know, if the paint dries. So I work a little quick so I can treat them more like oil paints and get them to blend a little bit. Now, that's a little see-through. As you know, our acrylics are a little see-through. So let's let that dry a tiny bit and we're going to work down into the water. So again, I use little crisscrossy kind of motion strokes in the sky, usually for landscapes and things as well. But with the water, I am going to go back and forth. I absolutely love the phthalo green and phthalo blue. It makes a nice, uh, beautiful watercolor, a nice blue-green. Uh, our New England water here is, is that color, and it's very cold. If you add a little more white, a little more of that phthalo green, you'll get a nice um, tropical uh, watercolor, which is that beautiful turquoise. So I am going right across. I'm just meeting my going up to my horizon line. You can see I'm using my back and forth strokes. I only have a little bit of ocean peeking through until the wave starts there. So I'm going to just go back and forth there. I like to mix my brush on uh, my paint on the fly, right on the brush. I don't want to mix it on the palette. It will look too contrived. I want it to have it look a little more natural, light and dark. Sometimes there's more green. Sometimes there's more blue. Sometimes I go right into my white and I throw a little of that on. And I like the way these brush strokes going back and forth. Even if the paint's a little thin, it's kind of a cool um, texture with the brush strokes. So it just makes a nice, it, it works perfectly for oceans. So I've got a little bit of sky there. I've got a little bit of ocean. It's just that blue green. Like I said, you can even take a little white. I'm just going to use the same brush. I'm going to grab a tiny bit of white just on the little corner there. And that, if you just sort of lay that brush sort of on the side, you could run right across and get some little white caps back there. And I'm doing it while the paint's wet so that 
it just blends it and it just blends as you go almost without even trying i like that little bit of a brighter uh white it's just a little line from my paintbrush but doesn't it from a distance look a little like a white cap back there if it was too much and it was too heavy you could just dry i'm always drying my brush and using my dry brush i'm, I'm gonna just dry it off and if you needed to soften it you could just lightly go over it we're having a wave turn over here so we're going to have a little bit of white foam up here and under the wave if you notice when you're at the beach and you're looking at the water when the wave comes up to break it looks like a little bit of lime green in that little area it's sort of where the water is getting a little thinner the sunlight shining through and you're getting that nice look that's a little trick even if you're painting tiny tiny little waves throw a little of that lime green in so where my wave is going to be breaking here i'm just going to quickly brush in a little lime green i'm using the same brush i've just dried off the dark color it's I, I like sometimes just to have, I use this color a lot, so I have it in the bottle mixed up, but it's so easy to make with your primaries. If you had your cad yellow, a little of that phthalo green and a little white, you'd get that same color. So don't worry about having to buy all the colors. You can really mix up everything you need from your primaries. Oops, I kind of went over where my foam is going to go, but I'm just getting a little of that lime green in there. And I'm going to go back because it looks like my sketch is a little different here. So this is going to be ocean here too. So let me just quickly put that in. You see I'm using those back and forth strokes, tiny bit of white on the corner of my brush, and I can streak that in if I want a little bit of white caps. Okay, so the wave is turning over. It's got that lime green. But where this foam is on the top, it casts a little shadow right underneath here. I'm going to make some foam here, which again would cast a little bit of a shadow. I'm just going to take my brush, dry off the lime green. I'm going to go get a little bit of a darker blue green for under there. I'm going to take maybe the teeniest bit of black just to deepen that a bit. I, I don't like to use black often, but I want this to be more like a dark Prussian blue or a, um, a navy. And I'm just simply going to go right under where I plan on putting that foam. Can you see the line of the dark there? And I'm lucky because I'm working fast. This green is still wet, so I'm going to be able to blend that pretty easily. So it's just on there. It's going to be a little shadow here, too. And it's just that phthalo blue, a little bit of phthalo green, and a teensy touch of black. Again, I always have a paper towel. I want to use that dry brush to blend. So I'm getting all the color off. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Nice to see you all showing up tonight. I won't keep you long, but I just wanted to pop in this week quite a bit to paint some things for you and talk about my membership. But I want to get the painting done first, and I'll tell you all about that as we go. Because this is wet and wet, look at how easy it is to blend. What I'm doing is putting my little brush that was cleaned off, it was dry, and I'm just putting it between where, two those, where those two colors meet, and I'm softly blending it. Now, you're going to start picking up color when you do that. So keep the paper towel here on the cloth, and just keep wiping it off. And that's going to give you a nice blend for those two colors. I know sometimes you don't paint as fast as I do. So what I would suggest if you're painting and you've got, hey, Faye, your lime green, and you put your shadow on, and you, you, know, you fiddle it around with a little bit, and the paint dried, what do you do? It's no problem. Just re-wet it. Just put a little bit more of that lime green in up where it meets it. Put a little bit of your shadow color where it meets and just blend then. Now, I'm, I'm not going too, too fast, really, and that's still pretty wet. So I'm going to do the same thing. I am just going to go right along where those two colors meet and soften it. And if I feel like I've picked up too much color and I'm dragging too much of that shadow in, I simply dry off my brush. I've skipped a little spot there. I'm going to just go back in with that lime green. Soften it. Kind of liking the way that looks pretty bright now that that's maybe set up a tiny bit. So maybe I want to get just some touches here and there of, it, of the lime green. Just some touches. I don't want to do the whole bit, but can you see how that just pops a little bit? I think I'm going to use, it's almost like there's a little bit of a, the way the direction of the water is. So I'm just touching it here and there with a little bit of that. And I might go in and just, if it looks too much like a line, even though I've blended it, I might go in and just make it a little more uneven. You see how it's a thinner line there? I'm going to pot that up. 
You can really have some time to move these colors around and try it. Play around with it. All you want to do is play and have fun. Don't get worked up about it. If you worry about it too much, it's just not going to happen for you. Just play around. It's acrylic paint. You can paint over it if you don't like it. You're not going to discover how things work if you're too timid to try. So just throw the color on and have fun. So a little foam is going to go up here, the white caps that's turning over, and a little bit down here. And you can almost see from some of my waves up here, it looks a little gray, doesn't it, in the white on top? But I really would rather use a slate blue. I don't like using, like I said, black too much. So I'm going to just mix up a little bit of a slate blue. So I'm using black and my blue and my white. I don't want to do just a black and white. Um, it just gives you a little color. So I know it looks very gray here, but it's really pretty bluish. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to paint the whole area. I just want a little bit of a darker tone under my white. If I went in here and just painted pure white, you'd have nothing, um, no shadows underneath. It wouldn't look right. So I start many times just going from dark to light in most anything that I paint. So we're starting with a little bit of dark in here. I've scooted that on. I'm going to go to white now, and I think I'm going to leave um, the, the same brush and just dry it off. I don't want to get it too bright yet. At the very end, you can dab on little bits of color of, of white stronger. I spatter it on with a toothbrush, and that's what's going to make this wave pop and have little bits of it closer to you, is those bright whites at the end. So that's why we need to start with a little bit of a blue-gray. I'm going to take white now on my brush. I know it's hard to get everything in here as well as my palette, but I, I'd like to have you see my, my palette when I grab color. So you can see I've taken white on my brush, which has a little residue of paint on there, so it's not super bright. And I'm just going to go where I want that wave to break. It's You know water. It's very rough. It's, it's not a perfect line, so I... I'm just kind of dabbing it and making it a little irregular. I don't want it to be perfect. And I'm just going to dab it on there. And you, can you see how it's mixing in with the color underneath, the dark blue? And in some areas are a little lighter. That's perfect for a little underpainting. Now let's do the same down here. So the wave's turning over. And down here, you've got a little bit of splashiness and some foam from the wave that came up on the shore previously. I'm just doing this from my imagination and from some samples I have here. So I'm not worrying about looking is it a perfect wave and would that really look that way? Because I, I don't mind. I'm just going to see what I like the look of. You see I'm dabbing it a little bit. It's getting a little bit of like a foam, like a little bit of splash even. And I do want to add a little bit of brighter whites and with a clean brush. But for now, let's let it dry a minute and let's throw in just a little bit of sand. I love ivory. I use it a lot, so I do have it all, again, in a little bottle, but it's not anything that we can't mix up if we had our colors. And I'm going right into that lighter color with this messy brush that has a little bit of blue and green tint on it because I want that to be that sort of shade to start. I don't want it to be the brightest color yet. So it's a little bit of a ivory with some blue and green mixed in. I'm going to sort of just bring it up into that wave a bit. And that'll be a good base to start because, again, when we add a little bit of the ivory by itself or a little bit of ivory and white on top, then it will pop also. I might want a little tiny bit of brown in there. I love starting dark, like I said, and going light. Okay, now I will wash that brush off. Let's let that set up a tiny bit. Pop on up to the sky so I can get that second coat of blue. With your acrylics, you know that you lots of times need a couple coats. Your best bet is to let the first coat dry completely. Actually, put on a fairly thin coat. That will keep you from having all those bumps and ridges. And I know I'm a little impatient too, so I will have a hair dryer or a heat gun handy sometimes. But let it dry and then go back with your second coat. And you'll have a nicer look that way. And I don't mind that some of this white is going to show through even with my second coat because it's just a sky and you would have some light areas in dark. I'm going to actually grab a little bit of white now and just mix that in. I like the periwinkle color that I get when I when I mix that white into that blue. And I'm going to throw some clouds in here while this blue is a little wet. So let's just get it sort of covered. I try not to make clouds 
make too much out of them because then they'll look more natural. If you, if you get and work them too much and, and, and they get too contrived looking and too perfect because clouds are all kinds of shapes. They're, they're crazy shapes. They're shapes that you almost wouldn't believe if you put them on. So let's just put some clouds in there quickly and leave it. We're going to tiny five by seven we're working on. We're not going to get too worked up about it. Same brush, drying it off. Now, a little tip for clouds that I like to use is I take whatever brush I'm using. I'm using this small one, probably an eight. No, it's only, it's a four filbert rounded edge. If I was working on a big painting, I would use the same sort of brush, only larger. Here's how I do my clouds. I take a little bit of white on the corner of my brush. Can you see how it's loaded? It's um, loaded with paint just on the edge. I, I pat it off a little bit so I get a little bit of a blend. This is the top of my cloud where the heavy white is. I want my clouds to be heavier on top. Kind of little bumpy shapes. And then I sort of work them out to blend into the background on the bottom. I know it's sort of formula-like, but it works for me. Um, so I take my brush with that white on the top, lay it flat, and use that white paint on the edge. And can you see I've got like a little bump there, another little bump, a bump. And then when I get to the end, I kind of pull it straight out. I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's wet on wet. What am I going to do? I'm going to wipe this off again and just use the, the, the dry scraggly brush to soften it and don't worry if you if you lose all that nice dark edge you can go back as many times as you want i mostly want to get a little shape that's a little bit um more of a more of a solid edge towards the top but see how it's blending into the background it's a little trick for clouds and i put them wherever i want i do the same thing i go and get a little white on the corner of my brush i always pat it off a little bit i don't want to go on with too much white and you can make any shape you want. But I do like to have that little kind of a curvy shape on the on the tops. And I just soften it in. You could take it and go in front. So look at this is a little heavier here. So doesn't it look like it's in front now? And I will go back in here and I might add, sometimes when it's dry, I add the tiniest, tiniest little bit of yellow to my paint and put on like a little bit of yellow into the cloud. And it gives us just a little bit of like a sunshine showing through. If it was a bigger painting, I might add some purples in there. You could add whatever you want, but that's just a basic cloud just to, to get us started. And, 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 uh, and you can just play with it because look, at it's still wet. And if you want to make one a little bit softer so it's way, it's a little bit further in the background. This is all practice. So even if you want to do it on your mixed media pad or something and play around with it, you can. So use that as a guide, but go ahead and make the shapes that you like, any shapes you want. All right, so I like the way the water is back here. If you wanted to, you could come in and run some colors through there, darks and lights if you wanted to. A lot of times I'll just use, even though it's a big flat brush, I will use on the chisel edge and get a nice thin line. If I wanted to go in and, you know, get a little bit of a darker area, I could do that. Just can you see how I'm just using it on the chisel edge? You could go ahead and put some of that lime green back there if you want, everywhere, you know, every now and then. Um, it didn't really need it on this small one, but I'm just showing you that if you wanted to, you could just run some little colors back there. Okay, now the fun part comes. We're going to really dab on some heavier white. It's a little wet still. I would tend to usually let it dry, but I'm not going to keep you all night. I'm just going to keep you a few minutes just to show you how quick and easy these sort of things are. I'm going to really just take my brush. I'm, look, I'm not even hardly holding it. I want it to have irregular little shapes, so I'm not going to concentrate and hold it real tight. I'm hardly even, you know, I'm hardly even giving it any pressure. I'm taking some white. I might dab it off, just dab off a little bit, and I'm going to just go on to where that foamy bit is, and I'm just laying on some darker, well, I don't want to say darker, stronger bits of white. Here it's kind of splashing up. Can you see? I'm just barely touching here and there. And you can take these bristle brushes, they're hog bristle, they're great because you can almost take them and scoot up a little bit so you could have a little bit of that spray coming up. That could even happen up here. Some places I want it pretty light. I am not thinking about it too much. Just play with it and have fun. Now, because this little bit of foam is on top of the way, uh, sand, we're going to put a little shadow under there too. But I really like to really just Pop it on there a little bit heavier in places. 
Sometimes it's just little tiny bits, which you could come in with a smaller brush if you wanted to and, and just make little bits. I might put a little bit of white with some of that lime green and just in a couple places, like just pop that a little tiny bit brighter. Not everywhere again, like before, just just so you're makes a nice pattern. Sometimes when I'm painting, it's design too. It's not just painting what I see. It's sort of making it into a little design. I want to get a little bit of a shadow under there on the sand. So whatever color is darkest, you don't have to worry too much. I'm going to just take some of this blue green I had. I'm going to mix it with maybe a little brown. And this is just to give a little shadow under this foam that's sort of coming up on the sand. I went very blue-green there, which is fine. I'm going to take some of that ivory color and just, while it's wet, soften it so it's not like a harsh line. It does need to be a little browner, I think. Let me go in with a little brown here. I don't want to have a too green-blue. A little brown. I'm putting it on. It's looking a little heavy to me and dark. I don't want it. I want it to be more of a blended softer line so I'm, I'm just drying my brush off I'm not going into water at all yet and I'm going to go back into that that ivory I'm using it to blend where my dark shadow is but I'm also going to pat it here and there on the sand the sand we did a little dark now if I take that straight ivory I'm not going to paint that whole bit because then we would lose what we had underneath and your lighter color wouldn't pop but if you just put dab it here and there it's lighter than what was under it. And sometimes I finish it off by adding white to whatever color I'm putting on the top. And I might just hit that here and there. Let me hold it up so you can see a little bit. So can you see, you've got that bluey, sandy color underneath. And I've just gone with some straight, bright colors and add top, pop them right on the top. You could wait for your sand to dry and it would really show up. And I might take a little white too, here and there. Now, that's already looking pretty much like a pretty decent little ocean scene, right? I think that's good. Um, what I like to do, especially on a bigger painting, but it's really fun to finish it off with some spray with like a little, uh, just an old toothbrush. When I want to do spattering with an old toothbrush, I just water down some of my paint. You could do this for stars in the sky. You can do it for um, snow. It's really fun for a lot of things. The thing is, is I want to have it just kind of right where where um, the wave is. So the toothbrush might be a little bit much. I might want to use just a little, as long as you have a brush that's kind of stiffer. This is a little tiny hog bristle brush. And you know what? It might work better because I can kind of control where it goes a little more. It's a little messy, but it's a great technique. So I'm just going to spray in that. And again, you can always, you know, make some of these coming up like this. This has dried a little more now, so I could really put some heavier white on there. I don't know if I need it. Looking at it in the in the video, and that's a good tip: is looking at your painting and through the lens of a camera, take a picture of it, hold it up in front of a mirror. Um, it'll really give you a better idea than sometimes your eye up this close. Hey, Michelle. Hey, thanks for popping in. I'm just popping into to show everyone how quick and easy waves are. And because this is little, it's not nearly as detailed as this little bigger painting here, but you get the idea You um, how quick you can do these things. And when you do them and you have fun, um, you learn. And if you have fun when you're painting them, you're gonna come back and paint them again. And then you might come paint them again, and guess what? Then you get better and better and better. So we don't want to we don't want to get down on ourselves and say I can't do it, and mine doesn't look like yours, and mine doesn't look like hers. If I paint this again, even just now, it wouldn't look like this. So nobody, they won't all look the same. So this is all I'm going to really do because I want to show you how quick and easy you can do something like that. So what do you think? Does it look like it's done? Oh, thank you, Michelle. Um, I love it. I love to paint and I love to show you guys what I'm working on. Um, so this is another type of wave. It's like a big curl, but you can see we've got that little lime green in there. These turquoises really make it pop and make it look a little more tropical. So you can just put those on, but you can see how dark I started. I started very dark, worked my way up with some lime green, some turquoise, did a gray blue for this part and dabbed on some white 
I think on this one, I went a little too much with the white. So then I went over it and put a little wash kind of here and there of a dark. So acrylics are great because you can go back and forth, back and forth and add and take things out. And they're a very forgiving medium. And there's some clouds that I have done where I put that little bit of yellow in, a little purple. So clouds and waves are fun. Let me um, just tell you a tiny bit because I appreciate you watching and you've probably heard all week, but my membership is open. I do have an art membership. It is open this week until Saturday. This is what we do. We paint complete paintings, but we also come and do little tutorials just on clouds, just on waves, just on trees, just on rocks. Hey, Debbie. Oh, you're going to the beach tomorrow. Yay. I was up this past weekend. Very cold here still in New England, but I did go to the beach and I cannot wait for it to get warmer because I do have a place in the summer up on um, the coast of Maine, which I absolutely adore. So um, if you are interested in the membership, just for information, there's a link I believe I put in the comments. I will put it, make sure it's there. Um, and what we do is you get two recorded paintings every month. You get two times a month to paint with me. You have ample time to ask questions. And I would um, love to, to work with you. There's no obligation. You can join, see if you like it. But it is a great community. And for, for less, way less than the price of one paint night, um, you get the whole monthly membership. Last night, I painted this for the membership. And speaking of oceans, um, in June, we're going to do the jellyfish. The camera is um, way close because I was showing you guys up close. But this is like a little board that I just painted with um, jellyfish on it. We paint on all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be canvas. And just take a look at the link and it will show you some of the paintings that we do. There are over 50 paintings in the library because the uh, membership is a year old now. And you have access to all that when you join. So as soon as you join, you can look back. It's really searchable. And you can just search for landscapes or seascapes or things that are blue or things that make good gifts. You can search all those those ways to come up with little paintings for you. And then you find the tracers and the color palette and the videos. So I hope you guys might uh, consider joining us. It's a great community. That's the best part is the people. Um, I think that's all I was going to say. I want to paint with you and, and so I could give you my little sales pitch without just coming on and going on and on about it. I'd rather paint. Um, any questions, you guys? I'm right here. So if you have any questions at all, put them in the comments there. Oh, another thing. Um, I send a text out before I go live like this to paint because lots of times it's not planned when I randomly just go on the Facebook page or the YouTube channel and paint. But if you want to be notified, you can certainly just join my text list. There it is. You can always screenshot that. Oh, and Mariana, I'll, I'll put the link in there right now. Um, but if you want to know when I'm painting or what's going on, you can also get on that list. And let me get the link there for you for the, for the membership. It just gives you some information. It's not making you join. You can join from there if you wish. Um, I think I put it at the tippy top. Oh, you know what? It showed up on the YouTube part. But let me see. If I can't do it, this is going to stay on Facebook, this recording, and I will go in and put it in the description. But let me try really quick if I can put it in there for you and see if it shows. Sometimes on Facebook, it won't let me show links, even in my own page. Um, let's see if it goes. There it is. Oh, nope, just to YouTube, maybe. Oh, it might have gone to Facebook, too. I see it there. You can click on that or copy and paste that, and it just gives you a little idea about um, what the membership is about. We do lots of paintings, um, all kinds. I take suggestions from people. This uh, just as a little – I just have a few here, and I'm not going to keep you guys all night, but so we did – you know, this month we did the um, – it might be easier if I, if I show it to you here. Let me just make this bigger. And you might even see some of them behind me, a lot of the, the waterfall painting we did. We're doing that little willow wear, the blue wear with the yellow flowers coming up, recording on that, uh, little sunsets. I mean, I have all kinds of things. One night we just got together by Zoom and just practiced water droplets and painting transparent objects. So much fun. But listen, you guys go and have a great evening. And if you have any questions, reach out. Um, I'm always watching the comments on this uh, video, or you could certainly just send me a message. So have a great night, you guys. Thanks for popping in.